Hey Crypto Wizard Short here and today is a big day because we can trade Bitcoin futures on the CBOE. Now why is this such a big deal? Well check out the previous video where we talk about Bitcoin futures, what a futures contract is and why this is so great for Bitcoin. But in this video we're going to compare the difference between buying a futures contract on the CBOE and buying a futures contract on the CME which are two different exchanges. So both are offering different contract structures. And if you want to look at the fact sheets for the contracts, I'm putting a link to them in this Excel tool. So you can go to CryptoWizards.net and download this tool for free. If you want to check out the fact sheets as well, you can. There'll be links to them. You can click on them. It'll give you all the details. But the CBO is open Bitcoin futures for trading today, which is awesome. And the CME will be opening it on December the 18th. The trading hours and the expirations, etc., are in the fact sheets, etc. You can go and download those and read through those. But I want to talk about the game changing differentiators between the two contracts to keep this video short. First of all, the contract size. Now on the CBOE, where the Bitcoin ticker symbol is going to be XBT, by the way, the contract size is one, meaning that one contract equals one Bitcoin. So if you were to buy a futures contract on the CBOE, you will get the same movement in price in terms of profit or loss as you would if you actually owned Bitcoin. Now remember with a futures contract, just to recap, you don't actually own Bitcoin. All the institutional investors who are out there who are going to be buying futures contracts are not actually buying Bitcoin and the contracts will be settled in cash US dollars, just to remind you on that. But uh, on the CME, the Chicago Mercantile Exchange, one contract will equal five Bitcoin. So you need more capital to enter in one trade if you're going to trade it on the CME. Now, the contract limits as well. This is another really good thing about the futures market is there are contract limits to prevent people from cornering the market. When I say people, I mean big dog, big size institutional investors from cornering the market. So the maximum contract size that you can have or contract limit you can have for one of these is 1000 and across all the different calendar spreads uh, or calendar months, I should say, or contracts, it would be 5000 in total. So the limits to what any party can own in terms of futures are capped and it's the same on both exchanges. Now, another game changing differentiator is that one tick is one cent on both exchanges, but the price has to move up $10 for you to make $10 on the CBOE. If it moves $11, you're still $10 in profit. So it moves up in $10 blocks. On the CME, it's $5 blocks. So if it goes up $5, you make $5. If it, if it goes up, well, you make more actually because there are, <laughs> you make five times as much as that, sorry, $25 because there are five Bitcoin in one contract, just to remind you. Um, but essentially, if it goes up $4, you don't make anything. If it goes up $5, then you're, you make profit. Or if it goes down $5, you lose money, depending on whether you bought or shorted. Remember, on Bitcoin futures or any futures contract, you can make money whether the price goes up or down. If you bet or trade or buy a short contract that the price is going to go down, you betting on the price going down, you will make money. If you buy a long contract, you make money as the price goes up. So that is something worth noting. It's another really good reason to understand futures because you can short Bitcoin as well as own the underlying asset if you wanted to hedge yourself. Now, the contract value is tracked by the Bitcoin reference rate. So this is made up of the last time I checked, it was Bitstamp, Itbit, GDAX and Kraken. It, it says it right here on the tool. So that is the essentially the Bitcoin price that's being tracked. And there's a weighting and a weighted average on the prices of those exchanges that the CBOE and the CME are using. So that's the Bitcoin reference rate. It's this weighted average of the different Bitcoin exchanges to track the price. Meaning that when you're buying a futures contract, you're not actually buying Bitcoin. You're not actually directly pushing the price. But anyway, the margin requirement, now this is where it gets interesting, is 30% on the CBOE and 35% on the CME. Meaning that I would need four and a half thousand dollars to trade today if Bitcoin was at fifteen thousand dollars. I would need four and a half thousand dollars 
to enter into that contract. And that's aside from the maintenance margin. This is what's so great about futures because there's this margin requirement. You only pay a deposit for the contract. So to get the benefit of the same price movement as if I own Bitcoin, I only need 30% of the capital, which is really good when just talking about the margin. It's going to be 35% on the CME when they open on December the 18th. But still, the same principle holds that I need less money to place a trade and I can get the same returns, which is called leverage. But I wanted to show you here, really, what does it mean if I own a CBOE contract versus a CME contract? So, for example, let's say that I buy one contract and I buy it on the CBOE. That means that today, so Bitcoin's price today is $15,000. So if the price of Bitcoin doesn't move, nothing happens. I make no profit or loss. All I have is the cost of entering into the contract, which is like 50 cents, depending on the exchange that you, uh, the broker that you use. But if the price goes up to say $17,000, I will make $2,000 profit, which is great because if I own Bitcoin, it would be the same. And also I don't have all the hassle of fiat currency transfer into Bitcoin and paying, you know, 5% credit card fee if I'm not using a bank transfer to buy Bitcoin. I don't have the risk of actually owning the cryptocurrency as well. But yet here I can make the same amount of money. And to enter the trade, I only needed four and a half thousand dollars plus my broker's maintenance margin as well. But I only needed four and a half thousand dollars to enter the trade. Whereas if I wanted to buy Bitcoin now, I would need fifteen thousand dollars. So let's say you're shorting. Shorting would happen the other way around. So if the price went down, you would make money if you shorted. Now I can just short easily. I don't have to short Bitcoin uh, in reality, which I'm not even sure is possible. But with futures, you can. You can make money as the price of Bitcoin goes down. Now, let's say I'm going to use the Chicago Mercantile Exchange. Well, if the price goes for from $15,000 to $17,000, I make 10 grand. So I make five times as much because one contract equals five Bitcoin. Conversely, if the price goes down, I lose 10 grand. Now, you're probably watching this and you're thinking, ah, this is crazy. These futures are nuts. You know, you, you can lose so much money and you know, you can see the capital required here is only 26 grand. So to own the price movement of five Bitcoin worth, so one contract on the CME equals five, I only need 26 grand plus my maintenance margin to enter into that kind of trade. But, you know, that's lower capital. If it reduced, if the price reduces even by 2K, you know, I'm eating into 10K of capital. That's crazy. Don't worry. Um, we're going to cover trading futures in other videos, but for now, when you trade futures, you will, you should and must, please, always put in a stop loss. Always make sure that you know how much you're prepared to lose, whether the price moves up or down on Bitcoin. You put in a stop loss the minute that you enter the trade. So if the, the price hits a certain point, you're out. But if you manage your money well and you're intelligent about how you place trades, you can trade Bitcoin more safely than owning it and you're doing it on exchanges that are regulated by the CFTC. This is a really good thing for people who want to speculate on the price of Bitcoin. If you like the video, share it.